Game is fun and all. Is it good though? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Tropical and I'm here with John Cletus, Gan, Man, and Hush. Um, we're some of the developers behind Vale and one of our favorite things to do is check out the reviews after game launch. Who wants to read the first review? Guns feel butter smooth and I love the physics. For an early stage game, this is really well polished. Tropical keeps dying to me. <laughs> Suck it. Who wrote this? <laughs> I'm gonna pwn you. <laughs> hey, who writes that on a review? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna like specifically come and phone you. <laughs> Great game, good devs, better than Onward. Three out of three. <laughs> is this a three out of three score? <laughs> Damn. Three out of three. Three out of three. My OCD is pissing me off right now. It's supposed to be five or ten. Pick I, one. I, it can be, it can be, you know what? Tiagra, three out of three. That's my new way of, 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 I mean, think about it. One out of three, bad. Yeah. Two out of three. Medium, three out of three good. Like, what else yeah. do you need, Panda? <laughs> you cannot go prone in this game. If you want to try and lie down on the floor, the game will literally lift you up into the air. It's always a big minus when VR games unnaturally limit the movements you can do. I mean, not I, sure I, if I agree I, with that. I personally want to lay down on the floor 90% of my gameplay time, so... I mean, I, I bought... <laughs> A yoga mat that's super squishy just so I could lay down on my stomach for most VR games because that's just you know the way that I want to play comfortably. Oh, you're just sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's trying to lay down on the floor? <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember like I did it once and onward just to try it. Like, I did it too. Deck. I was like, this isn't comfortable for me. Yeah. Maybe you guys need better yeah. floors. No, you land wrong too. You're like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> we're not a military simulator. That's the thing. Yeah. So we, we made certain choices because we're not a mil sim. It does change map design too. Like if you suddenly have spots people can lay down and it's like a tiny little kill hole. The gunplay is very average, better than Pavlov but worse than Onward. The recoil on the guns is actually quite reasonable and seems to follow a more realistic pattern. The damage output of the guns is also quite reasonable. It takes a few hits to take down an opponent unless if you get a headshot but enemies aren't bullet sponges either. What can we do to make the gunplay better? What do you guys think? Look, me personally, I'm happy with the gunplays. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the gunplay too. It's undergone a lot of tweaking. and It just, feels good to me. Like I just don't know what else we could... Honestly, Dude. more guns. Yeah, I feel like we need more guns. Yeah. There you go. It's so not about the gunplay. We don't want to change gunplay. We just want to add variety. And I'm pretty okay. Like, some people don't like the recoil, but my, my philosophy is if the recoil is too crazy, then it doesn't match where your hands are at. Like, in some games, like, I'll be holding a gun, the recoil will be like this, and my hands are still here, and it just doesn't feel that good. And then, you know, in regular games, you, you point and click. So if you point and click and shoot in a regular flat screen game and you have no recoil, you're a laser beam. Yeah. But in VR, just your natural, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like a shaky guy naturally. Same, yeah. <laughs> like, if I try to like shoot, like my hands naturally are moving. Yeah. The truth is, if you're used to a different game, you're going to be like, you're going to come to another game and you're going to hate that game's recoil. Then you're going to play it for like a month, get used to it, and then you're going to go back to the first game and hate that game's recoil, because every VR game has their own way of doing it, and it just takes time to get used to each one, and you're going to hate the new one until you get used to it. What, what, what does this mean right here? The controls are all kinds of messed up. It doesn't allow you to ignore the tilt of the left controller while using controller-based movement. Oh, I think... Um, the tilt of the left I get controller? what he's saying. So let's say you're pointing at somebody up high, and you're moving forward, it starts moving you backwards. And that's because your controller's starting to turn backwards. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to be able to do that kind of thing, there might be a way for us to fix it. Yeah, I'm actually going to send this to Albert first thing and Ivan because you could definitely take a look at it. How it runs, 30 series graphics cards like my 3070 Ti struggles to run this game. That says a lot about its optimization. We just had a major optimization on Mar. We have another one incoming for Kitty. We have like game level CPU optimizations coming. So like every update, Optimization is definitely the focus. And All I mean, right. this, this week, programmers are just focusing on optimizations. Maps are terribly made and are all CT sided. The only good map is Suna. Why? Because it's a copy of Dust 2. So, so quick question. Why is it that John Cletus prefers to make all maps CT sided? Do you, do you start off with that concept or does it just end up being that way? I always feel like the CT should have an advantage and be able to set up and plan a little more. Like, T's are going to rush or plan, like, more. Are you just a Ray Up fanboy? Because, oh, yeah. you know, I'm calling this, right? Can we can we please get some T-sided maps coming up? There's some in the work, for Wait. sure. So so it's not that they're CT-sided. It's that strategically you want the counter, the defenders to get to their locations first. Oh, yeah. First. Like, if you, if you look at all our maps, CT's get to sites first. They should. They should be able to at least set up before, you know, a full player rush, stuff like that. So 
So it's not that they're actually to like defender sided. It's just no. Like, that's just how a game's supposed to play, right? But if you give defenders like super OP strong positions, it can be that way. So we are constantly looking out for like balancing angles and stuff where it's like too OP. The land was a great experience for me and I love the opportunity, but about 60% of the people in the crowd didn't know what was going on. Being a player there, I had someone ask me if I could see players through walls like the caster skin. <laughs> yes, a lot of people had no idea what they were watching. And a lot of people were assuming that, you know, they could see whatever, or the, the players could see all the spectator system. And I had a lot of people come up to me and say, I don't think it's fair if, you know, the players can see people behind walls. Um, very simply put, the target market for an eSports um, game, it doesn't just have to be players. It's really about bringing in mainstream people to, to watch eSports. So definitely got a lot of people in the crowd that, this might be their first LAN tournament they're ever going to or their first exposure to um, video game esports. And I think that's totally fine. Um, I think that we did a decent job at, at onboarding new people into the space. And I hope that a lot of these people end up becoming fans of, of VR esports and, and joining us. The game is very slowly getting better. And I mean slowly. Weekly updates are great, but they seem so focused on adding new things to keep people interested. I, I think that's really uh, an education issue where people don't really know there's always multiple timelines happening right yeah. features and content also being balanced with stability you know putting down tech debt and performance at the same time so yeah slowly <laughs> but yeah, look, i don't I mean, really know there's any other better way to do it now that we're in early access the way we design features and test them before we roll them out will we'll have to take a bit longer just because we have a bigger player base, we need to be more careful with what we're adding into the game. Some maps don't make any sense for competitive play and so on. In a year or two, I think I'll be able to recommend this game, but not in this stage. I think some of these two, uh, it's kind of like Mar. Like, a lot of people hated it, and then they played it and understood it, so... Yeah, there's definitely a learning curve to some of the new maps. This game was released two days ago and is already better than 90% of all VR shooters. Great weapon choices, gun sounds good enough to make you cry. Good maps, just because they are gray, doesn't mean they're bad. <laughs> it's a uh, brutalist architecture, so it is meant to kind of have a vibe of, um, like most common one I hear is it's just concrete everywhere. The gunplay is absolutely excellent in this game. The time to kill is very quick and guns feel powerful. Each gun feels different enough, but they all have their uses. Some maps favor close quarter combat and others favor longer range weapons. About the only negative I can really think of is the maps weren't as good as they could have been, especially if you compare them to the top PvP games outside of VR. The maps just seemed a little forgettable. forgettable. There wasn't enough visual variety within them. And they kind of look like a little generic. John Cletus, you need to make $100 million budget maps with no money, ASAP. I'm on it. I can't entirely agree, now that we have like a volcano and you know just so many different settings. Uh, over time, as the map variety gets bigger, like it'll still kind of be the same where, you know, we have like lore and aesthetic that we follow. So even though it might be in a different location, like we have a art style. So some people might, you know, it's not their thing though. Like, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of like borderlands or like stylized art styles like that, so. If you like VR FPS, you need this game in your library. I love the way the guns feel and behave, as well as the fact that you can operate the grenades one-handed, no pin removal required. In other words, you can fire a gun one-handed, activate slash cook a nade in the other hand at the same time. Love it. My reaction is people like to blow shit up. Oh yeah. Less steps. Make it easier to blow shit up. More grenades. More grenades and blow shit up easy. All right. Veil VR gave me a chance at something I found to be impossible, and that is VR esports. It's such a small circle of people that it almost feels like family, and even though the thought of a big VR esports scene sounds amazing, I will miss the times where you could join a channel or a random game and know almost everyone in it. Wow, that's a lot of hours. 348 hours. Going from a small game with very few people where I knew everybody, I'm starting to get into the game more and more not knowing people, which is kind of cool too, but I do miss the, the days of knowing everybody. Yeah. But it's still it's still pretty small where I feel like if you put in some hours, you'll you'll get to know people. Current state, I cannot really recommend this game to anybody despite the low price. Reasons being, one, lack of content. Very few maps, very few guns, uh, very low player count. This can change, but make sure you check the player stats via the third party to see if people are actually still playing as there are no offline bots. I think our player count's pretty decent. I feel like I've always been able to find people since we've launched. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. The game just came out, like, a few days ago, and they have zero hours in the last two weeks. I don't even know when the last time they tried the game is. 
I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about. Gameplay, this one is subjective, but I find the lack of recoil, lack of economy, casual help, like seeing friendly through a wall, no friendly fire to be just not what I am looking for. Oh, yeah. like being able to see your friendly. I mean, I, I, I kind of like that I can know where my team's at. The thing is, like, we do plan on modifiers for custom lobbies for stuff like friendly fire and you know some games will have like hardcore mode where it does turn off all those casual features so like we're not closed off to giving the player more options oh this is me <laughs> tropical approves of this game i did approve of this game and i felt like i have earned my review because i've put almost a thousand hours on my main account <laughs> what? Wait, what people say <laughs> someone wrote i don't know but having an avatar of this game Hidden game library for public and having this game by activation key sounds like a fake review. Nice one. <laughs> the most unbiased Steam review I've ever seen. I, I agree. <laughs> totally not biased whatsoever. The Big Talker writes, I hope you're proud of your steaming pile of dog shit of a game you have here. It looks like you guys made a lot of improvements since the alpha. Xlab deserves a reward for biggest VR scam company of the year. Congrats. What? It gets better though. The big, someone called Mac and Boney. The Big Taco, you literally have over 300 hours in Rocket League. Lol, your opinion is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> so we've gone through all the reviews. We really deeply care and appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time out of your day to leave some feedback. Uh, Steam reviews are super important, especially for indie devs. I mean, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, you can slap them with a million reviews and give it 30% or whatever it's at. Won't change anything, but for indie developers, good, medium, and even bad reviews are extremely helpful, especially when there's actionable items on the list. So taking all this feedback into account, we're working on performance, we're working on stability, we're working on adding more content like guns, modes, and novelty fun game modes. And we're also now listening to the community because now that we're live, we know where people are. So we've added servers in Tokyo, Singapore, and in Brazil with many more servers to come. So if you live somewhere where you're not getting good ping and there's a community, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We will spin up servers for you all to enjoy. Thank you so much for taking the time.